What's up, guys? This is Matt the Misfit. I am joined with Plogo from Love Wrestling for this episode of the Matt Misfit Wrestling Podcast for Double or Nothing Predictions. What's up, Plogo? What's good, my man? Super excited to be here. This Double or Nothing card is shaping up to be stacked. Yeah, the uh, Double or Nothing Go Home show just ended. Pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty decent show all around. They usually don't have misses. But they so but they'll occasionally have misses, but it's usually hits with them. Um, we just got the finals of the Owen Hart tournament uh, official for the men's side. It's gonna be Owen. Uh, it's gonna be uh, not Owen Hart. <laughs> Owen Hart's the name of the tournament. <laughs> it's gonna be Adam Cole versus Samoa Joe. That should be a banger right there. Oh, for sure. I, I'm excited. I, I was interested how they were gonna do it. They could have went Kyle. And kind of had that story told, but they went Joe, so let's go. Giddy well, up. Well, let's talk about it right now since we're going to, I guess, since it's fresh in our mind, let's talk about that. Joe, uh, Cole, they were teasing this a few months ago, uh, a few months ago in NXT before they both mm-hmm. left. Well, one was fired, the other one just left. <laughs> um, yeah. I think this is a match that they we wanted to see, and right. I think Tony Khan's probably given it to us because that's what Tony Khan does. He gives us all the matches. That, that we, we want. want to see. I mean, for better or for worse, I think there are times that he does pander to the crowd yeah. a little too heavy. He needs to start, you know, going against it. But hey, what well, if you got the white hot ball, so to speak, run with right. it. So I'm super excited to see this match. It's definitely contrasting his styles. I have a feeling if I was a betting man, you're going to see Jay Lethal get involved somehow because that is all intertwined here. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's a. Right. Dirty finish where I see Adam Cole going over because Lethal cost Joe, and then we get that right. title picture, that ROH TV title happening. I mean, personally, I don't think Adam Cole needs the Owen Hart tournament. Uh, no. But, again, like you mentioned, Samoa Joe is Ring of Honor TV champion, and they got to somehow do something with the Ring of Honor. This one's a toss-up, sh- but I got Samoa Joe going over on this one. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Samoa Joe doesn't need this either. No. This is where I kind of was like, when I had envisioned this tournament and I made my predictions, I took, I thought it was a fun story to tell Dax making it and winning it because right. of just all of his love for the Hart family and just it would be like solidifying a new single star. I know FTR is hella over and we'll talk about yeah. them later. But I, so I, Neither one of these guys need it, but I guess if you want to make the Owen tournament a yearly thing that feels bigger than, right. you know, it's a bigger deal, then yeah, you put the stars in there. So yeah, I have no problem with Samoa Joe winning. I just feel like I just I'm not factoring right. out the Jay Lethal thing. So we'll see I, who wins on Sunday. I, I mean, when they first announced that they were doing this tournament, my the name I came up with was not even in the tournament, which was a little surprising to me. Was Brian Pillman Jr. Yeah, uh, because he has ties to Owen Hart. Mm-hmm. Like his family has ties to Owen Hart and the Hart family. It, I, it was like a no-brainer right there, but I'm very surprised they didn't put him in the tournament. But uh, but yeah, I'm going with Samoa Joe. Who are you going with, Adam Cole? Yeah, I'm gonna run. With, I'm gonna go with Adam Cole, baby. It's a done. Well, I just I can't argue either way. See, yeah. this is what AEW does to me, and I, I've talked about it at every prediction show we've done or paper on between two beers. All that is they you can talk me into almost ninety nine percent of the matches going either way, right? With like a few random exceptions where they threw a QT Marshall in a match or yeah. something. But like, yeah, you could talk me into either way. But I'm gonna run with Cole just because. And speaking of Adam Cole, we're going to talk about his girlfriend next. Britt Baker advanced to the finals in a terrible finish of a pretty decent match, as I have to say, uh, against either Ruby Soho or Chris Statlander. That will be decided on Friday for Rampage, which they are not taping Rampage as we speak. It's Apparently, it's a live episode this time around. I guess it's, they usually do live Rampages for pay-per-view weeks. But, uh... Which- which I'm good with because that yeah. would spoil the fun, yeah. I guess, if you're still trying to build. Because I guess technically now Rampage would be the official go-home show for Double or Nothing. So the, yeah, I'm glad that nobody's spoiling it for me at the moment. <laughs> now, a lot of people had Tony Storm going to the finals of this tournament. 
I'm upset that that's not happening. So I got to stick with a new. I I don't want it, but I know. But I just think Britt Baker's going to win it. Unless, yeah. unless they're setting up the whole thing with Jamie Hader turning babyface on Britt Baker, because that's happening at some point. That's possible. And again, I. I have Ruby Soho winning it. Right. Ultimately, it's my pick. Because again, I looked at these tournaments as here's an opportunity to elevate somebody into these title pictures, especially on the women's side. You need to start building some contenders for Jade right. and Thunder Rosa. And so it could be a vehicle to have Britt take the L and maybe, like you said, get the the offshoot um, of Jamie Hayter storyline going and break that away because Hayter's one of those two. I think it's time for her right. to break away from Britt. So I'll ultimately I'm going to run with Ruby beating Chris and then Ruby beating Britt via Jamie Hayter just so I can say that my bracket wasn't completely destroyed. Right. Does that mean I'm confident? If there was a confidence pick on this, I would have the least amount of points possible because it's Britt Baker and there's nothing wrong with her going over because she is fantastic. Now, originally, this was supposed to be Ruby so- Soho and Ikaru Shida, I believe. Uh, but yeah. but that was a that was a whole that whole thing was weird. Uh, how they did that wasn't a fan. Of how they did it, glad they uh, reconciled the whole thing. But yeah, that was just weird. But the. What does the winner of this tournament get? That's what I want to know, because they haven't really actually specified. What does the winner get of either tournament? I don't think that they get, like, anything. I don't think it guarantees you a title shot. I think you just, you won the Owen Hart tournament. You are, because they want to make this a big deal yearly. Yeah. So that is it. I, but what it should do is, like I said, it should elevate right. whoever wins it and say, hey, I won the Owen. I was in this tournament. I want a shot at right. You know, and then you just, you naturally have that story. It, <clears throat> not to draw comparisons, but like when they, when they, that's what they were trying to do with the Andre the Giant battle memorials. Oh, yeah. And ultimately when they did, I can't remember what they renamed it. Was it the May Young? It wasn't the May Young classic. They had the, it was the fabulous. They, Hula, yeah, they tried. Yeah, they, they were, yeah, they brought one in for the re- women. Then, yeah. But they, they renamed it. Either, my point is, is that they, they want it to feel like that. And if they want to do that, then they need to make this like, I'm the Owen Hart winner. I should get a shot. I don't need to be a part of the rankings. Right. So we'll see what they do. I'm interested. I'm, I'm more intrigued on the women's side because I feel like I said, whoever wins this women's one should be propelled into that upper, upper card on the women's side. Cause they desperately need to start building some more forces for Jade Especially Jade, because Jade has just ran through everybody. And one more thing on on Jamie Hader: when you watch her matches, like she is fantastic in the ring, and you can tell how over she is. Yeah, she's a fantastic worker. She's damn good. I hope she they do something with her. I know that she's brought in. She took a took some losses early, right. but again, you can with the ranking system, you can reset that. You get her get her right. hot, get her going, and she can go with anybody. Her versus Thunder Rosa would be a hell of a I'm sure her versus Jade, she right. could help carry Jade in that match for sure. I'm down with that. All right, now we're going into the buy-in. I know we're going to outplace here, but it doesn't matter. It's the, we don't know which way this is outside of the main event. You got, you got Pluggo on the show. I don't follow rules anyway, so we, you do. We will you be want. saving obviously the main event, Punk and, and Paige for last, obviously, <laughs> but because that's that's what everybody's here to talk about. But Misfit and Plugger, we do what we want. We go in any order we choose. <laughs> so we got Hookhausen versus Tony ah. Nita and Mark Sterling. Hookhausen's gonna beat that ass. <laughs> I hope so, man. Oh man. I'm I, so excited. I, this like this whole Hookhausen thing is so awesome. I love everything about it. So I love Dan Housen and I love Hook and I really love Hook. And I've made it. I've made it known that I don't think you can call yourself a professional wrestling fan if you don't have a slight crush on Hook. That is just a beautiful man. Uh, just he's a ama- and he's man, where all the hookers at, man. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Team Hook forever. But so when they and I and I I always had this problem right. with Hook was always like if he keeps beating people the way he's beating people, you're gonna have to put him in a title picture. You're gonna right. have to make. You're gonna have to make. You're gonna have to give me a reason why he's oh, not. Oh, I'm the team convinced just, Hook is beating Ricky Starks for that title. Yeah, that 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 ultimately should be the end game. So what they did was, and then 
I didn't necessarily want Dan Housen and Hook to cross paths until it happened. And right. I was like, now I can't look away. This is amazing. And I think Tony Nee squashing Hook. Right. Or not Hook. I'm sorry. Dan uh, Housen. Dan Housen in two seconds. At, in the moment, I thought it was the wrong call. But seeing how they're building the storyline, I really right. think it's going to be the Dan Housen coming out party at Double or Nothing. And you're going to see what the guy could really do. Because if you look at Hook... You've never. Or I keep saying Hook. Dan Housen. I got. I got Hook okay. on the mind. I always got Hook on the mind. Dan Housen. If you've never seen him wrestle, you're missing out because the guy can wrestle. He's really talented. I think it's going to be a hell of a fun match, and I'm excited. I want to see Hook Housen just do YouTube shows but, where they just go on the road and try different chips and go to restaurants. The workout vignette they just did was fantastic. So I don't even think. I'm not even going to talk about the Tony Nese, Mark Sterling side of it because in no part of my brain do I see them winning and I don't want to see them win. I will riot if Hookhausen does not get the W. So, like, with Danhausen is, like, his character isn't about him, like, his wrestling ability, though. It's like his whole shtick is he's a comedy wrestler and that's working for him. Speaking yeah. of this whole Hookhausen thing, I, I, I don't remember who it was that said this. But this reminds me a lot of the, it's like a to me it's like, it's like a modern day uh, version of Steve Blackman and Al Snow. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I'm a huge fan of the buddy, the good cop, bad cop, or like the odd couple wrestling. That's what this reminds me of too. Like Hook it yeah. being you know Blackman and 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 mm-hmm. and Dan Housen is is Al Snow. Yeah, but that's pretty cool. I, I like this whole whole thing, this Hookhausen thing. I never in my wild dreams I thought a, a pop would be a handshake. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Hookhausen's gonna win decisively. Uh, Hook is great. Danhausen is great. It's gonna be great stuff. Well, both of them, Hook and Danhausen, both kind of started as like. The meme wrestler, if you will. Right. Like, nobody, like, Hook was a meme well before he wrestled, and he's able to back it up. Dan Housen, everybody looks at him as the oddball, which he is. It's tough to explain. And then you put two just these intense, like, over, they're both intensely over, and you put them together. Magic is bound to happen. Yeah. And, oh, I'm excited. Like, like Hook, everybody was like, Hook's just the meme, and then he got in the ring. <laughs> yeah. Then but, he got in the ring, and he took care of business. But, uh, but who, who's going who's gonna to take care of business is Jay Cargo because there's no chance in hell that Anna Jay is winning the, T, the TBS title. No, I don't think so either. I think, I think if I was a betting man, I think this Jade gets this W handedly again. No disrespect to Anna Jay, I just don't think she's ready. And this is the vehicle for her next jade's next challenger and if i was a betting man i would say there might be a debut in store here because right. i don't think and jpj my co-host between we were just talking about this on our our watch along yep. um we don't think jade's ultimate the ultimate person that beats jade is in the company it, right yeah, now. a lot of people have been saying that too including me but i'm not sure who it is yet like the two names that come to my mind is athena and Candice LeRae. Maybe yeah. not maybe not Candace, but probably Athena, but I'm not so sure on that yet. I'm, ha- maybe. I'm always hesitant with women right. who just had a baby because you never know. Becky Lynch took a while to come back. Right. Uh, you don't know how the body's going to respond, sure, so yeah. I wouldn't want her to rush back. She just had one in February. Um, so if, she, if she's ready, then hell yeah, let's go. If she's not, so be it. Athena would be great. I'm shocked that Athena has not made an appearance yet. I feel like that would be a major well, get Willow Nightingale. They should just sign her right. and put her and she's incredibly over. And if she beat Jade, the pop in the building would be insane, but Jade's getting to that level where she's getting over right. for being such a heel. Right. So I'm interested to see where they go with Jade. I mean, that's that what started, started with. To... I mean, that started happening with Brett in, uh, at some point too. So yeah. So yeah, Jade Cargill obviously going to win here. I don't. We don't know who she's going to face next. Uh, but but like, 
we'll find it. We'll figure it out. Some at some point, maybe Athena. Heck, it might even be Deanna Perazzo. I don't know. You know, it, it could be. It's going to be a good match. Well, Jade is getting better and better every yeah. week. Anna J will carry her as well in the spots that she's weak at. It's going to be a fun match. I just think that this is ultimately though. The next step in- though, you know who I think it should be if they ever turn Jade he- uh, babyface. S- Serena Deeb. Serena Deeb might, would be my pick if they turn Jade babyface. Yeah, um, well, Serena Deep's got bigger fish to fry. Uh, oh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. <laughs> Sunday Sunday night. So I guess ultimately we'll see what happens if we're holding our suspense, our suspense for that preview we'll talk about here shortly. <laughs> now, a match I think could possibly steal the show. Probably, maybe, depending on, given the factor of people in here, House of Black versus Death Triangle. Yeah, that got I mean, that's got a lot of elements, yeah. a lot of components for combustible. I'm a huge Ray Phoenix guy. Yeah. Um, I love all six of these individuals. Of I, I I love all six of these guys. We got Malachi Black, Buddy Matthews, Brody King. Uh, you know, Brody King's a big motherfucker. He can go. Um, Pack is. I'm still waiting for that. I need that the that singles match between Pack and Buddy Matthews like now. <laughs> yeah. A uh, Penta is great. Ray Phoenix is great. They had uh, one of the best matches last year in that steel cage match with the Bucks. Uh, but I have House of Black going over. Uh, House of Black should be undefeated for a while. Yeah, I don't. I don't disagree with you there. Um, I know that doesn't make for great uh, listening. If I'm just like, yeah, no, that totally <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. All the points you hit there, I'm with you. Um, we've seen, we've seen Phoenix and uh, Penta get tag titles. They're over. Pac has had a hell of a run. He's had he's had his moments. I think if you want to establish House of Black as a force to be reckoned with, not just in this moment, but throughout AEW. Right. Um, then they definitely go over here and we'll see what happens with them next because I think that they're really on to something special here. And I think Malachi Black, after this, should start focusing on championships. Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed though, to him. Though, though I do th- might, I think they're going to be on the Forbidden Door show, uh, but I'm not sure who they would wrestle. That's a, that, we'll, 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 get, we'll get to that bridge when we cross it. <laughs> Uh, there right. was there was a little bit of build towards um, Forbidden Door tonight on, on Dynamite, finally, uh, which well, I guess we'll talk about this now because it was actually no, they, never mind they weren't even on the they're not even on the pay per view. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, we'll talk about it anyways. FTR uh, it looks like it's going to be FTR versus uh, United Empire. Yeah, which I. I'm okay. Great O'Connor's not that great of a wrestler. Okay, I'm just, he's 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 been he's being saved by Jeff Cobbs, if we're being completely honest here. But um, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens there. I I will admit I don't watch a ton of New Japan. Yeah. I just we just talked about that tonight. I need to get more invested into it. It's just there's only so much wrestling and so right. much time in the world. But it's no disrespect to those gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. This match, I, I'm. I'm glad they're not doing it at double or nothing because I think they've got because I think it would take away from the the tag matches right. they've already got booked. Right. So that's going to be a hell of a match at Forbidden Door. Yeah, if that's what they're going to do, but well, there might be some more <laughs> for the Forbidden Door implications on the show. Yeah, we'll talk okay. about that. <laughs> oh yeah, I've well, got the AEW tag team tiles on the line. Jurassic Express take on Team Taz and Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland. Jurassic Express are losing the tag titles. To who? I'm not so sure who. Uh, If I am a betting man and I would go with my heart, I'm going to go with Swerve and Keith Lee. Yeah. Um, That sounds like a safe bet. I I like Starks and Hobbs a lot, too. I like all the components in this. I just and this is one of those things where it's no disrespect to Jurassic Express. It's right. no, or as I like, we like to call them Dino Two One Zero. Yeah, um, Dino Two One Zero. That's good. <laughs> um, it's no disrespect to them. I just feel like there's a bigger story to tell with Christian and Jungle Boy. Yeah. Plus, 
it's 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 just it's time. I feel like their title run has been overshadowed right. by a lot of other like stuff. The parties yeah. and the you know young bucks and the undisputed elite. You know all that kind of stuff. Their title win was overshadowed by Phoenix's injury too. Yeah, that that as well. Maybe they weren't supposed to win at that point. I mean, that's what I I'm convinced know. with, but I'm not sure. So, like, but if I but if I'm looking at it and I'm thinking long term, right. and Who do you want? Swerve, Swerve alone is a star. Exactly. He is, you 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 need to give him the ball, let him run with it, and then you add Keith Lee to that mix. And I know that there's some people out there that are sour on the two of them together because they feel like they're such big stars they should be doing solo stuff, which I agree. But give them the title. Give them an opportunity to run with it. We've seen what Jurassic Express can do. And Christian Cage needs to wrestle somebody because that guy is the (laughs) easiest paycheck in wrestling. And you need to have Jungle Boy turn on Christian Cage because Christian Cage is the reason that this match is even happening. Well, you you, the whole... Uh, Swerve and Keith Lee being uh, big, like big stars out on their own thing, and not people, a lot of people like wanting them or liking them as a team. John Moxley and Brian Danielson says otherwise. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, and that's why I think it's weird. That, and I understand that you put you you sign a guy like Keith Lee who was at the top of the mountain in NXT, and you sign a guy like Sh- Swerve Stick Strickland who was also. You know, North American title hit row was fantastic. You want to see them singles pushes do, but you got to do something with them to kind of introduce them to a new, it's, it's it's silly to say a new crowd, but it is. AEW is a new family. Introduce them in. You've already got some stuff going at the top. Give them a title run. Put them in there. I'm all for it. I'm, I'm signing up for it. Um, Please give that to me. I don't really have any more to say other than just make it happen, TK. I know you're listening. So I'm make gonna so I'm gonna go with Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland here. Uh, Swerve, I don't know how they managed to screw. He lasted about two weeks on the main, two or three weeks on the main roster. Uh, they, I think that that was a just they they because once you bring them up to the main roster, their non compete goes to ninety days rather than thirty. And, I mean, I don't know what they were thinking. They put so much into Hit Row. I'm not sure why they thought that that was the way to go. But, no, hey, no, whatever. No, 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 Triple H put a lot of work in Hit Row. Well they, well, they drafted him in the draft, so they, they put a lot of effort into keeping that. Hit Row was going. drafted really, high, really high, like high, too. Like fourth, like, yeah, like a fourth round pick or something. And I, I still don't know what they, I don't know what they were thinking. But hey, their loss is AEW's gain, and like I said, Swerve is one of the coolest right. dudes in the game. So I'm excited to see them win the tag titles on Sunday. And we mentioned Moxley and Danielson; they'll be in this whatever the hell type of stipulation this is, anarchy in a, in the arena match. I thought they were going with blood and guts, but it's going to be LAX. I'm going to call them LAX. I don't care. LAX and Blackpool Combat Club versus Joss. <laughs> um, Wizard. Will Yuta is in Japan right now. He's part of the uh, Best of the Super Junior Tournament. He seems to be, which I be, I wish them the best luck in that tournament. Um, I think LAX and Blackpool Combat Club are winning this match. Obviously, like there's no, you, they have to. I mean, just just on paper alone, if you're just looking at the lineups, you got Moxley, Danielson, right. Kingston. That three right there is better than any three that Yaz has. And they call it this. I thought it was funny that two weeks ago, Mox is going, I'm not doing the stadium stampede bullshit. Right. And then they go, we're going to call it anarchy in an arena. And he's like, son of a bitch. I'm in. Like (laughs) they're doing it because the, 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 which was smart because the stadium stampede match makes sense in Jacksonville in a big stadium. So yeah, in an arena, well, it's yeah, and they were. Gonna be a, it's oh, just going to be a crazy mayhem of madness. Yeah, I know it's right next yeah. to Daly's place, but they're not going to be next to Daly's place. They're going to be in Las Vegas. Exactly. So I mean, it's going to be interesting to see. I have a, the Blackpool Combat Club definitely goes over here. I think it should, and ultimately. I want them to not make the mistake they made last time with the Jericho group. All right. I want them to take the L 
and we move on from it and start doing something else and see because i think that there's we're just scratching the surface of what mox and danielson can do i'm okay if eddie kingston and danielson have issues and they right. kind of that plays into it i'm super interested to see what happens here and all i know is my eyes are going to be glued to it and i'm probably going to say holy shit a bunch well after this because i think danielson and mox are going to be busy in chicago having two different matches <laughs> Because I, depending on whoever wants to show up in this, I think, because I could see after this match, somebody like, somebody like Tanahashi or, or Zack Sabre Jr. coming out and, and challenging Moxley or, or Daniels. Because to me, those two matches have to happen at, at, at for Bindor. Yeah. And I, and I know Mox is. Done it on AEW TV. He's on. He's called out everybody under the sun at New Japan. So I would love to see where. I he mean, because it was supposed it. to be Moxley versus Tanahashi at All Out last year. That was the plan, but yeah. obviously, the pandemic couldn't. He couldn't come over. But also, he, I think he was already booked for another. Uh, I guess he pre-booked himself for some other show. I guess something like that. So hopefully, that's. I think that's going to finally set some stuff up here for that. Um, Moxley versus uh, Tanahashi because they did the because they changed their match in DC to a four way which which actually works better because now neither because Tanahashi doesn't have the title anymore and Moxley and then they could just have a regular, regular match now so there's that and who doesn't want to see Zack Sabre Jr. versus Brian Danielson? Yeah, exactly. I mean that match. It's definitely a dream match. I mean, if you wanted to run back Suzuki in some way, you could that, do that too. It would be called AEW New Japan Presents Ow My Chest Hurts, the yes, Sa- yes. Zack Sabre Jr. Brian Danielson edition. <laughs> Her chest looks like hamburger meat. A match that, okay, now, a match I don't think really should, if I'm being honest, this match should be on Rampage. If I'm being completely honest, like, I have no interest in seeing this match, <laughs> and that's going to say something. Jeff, the Hardys versus versus the Young Bucks. I don't really care about this match. Um, I was, I care about it because it's it should be a bigger deal than it is. I feel like they missed something here. I don't know if it was they needed to maybe eat the Bucks up a little bit more because the Bucks have been kind of not. They've been doing some other things, or maybe they needed to, the Hardys to have a more sustained tag run. And make it a bigger deal. I don't think it needed the AEW title belts, but yeah, there's just something about for some reason this match doesn't feel like it should. It should be two of the greatest tag teams of all time coming together wrestling in a in a match. It should be like it should just be huge, and it just feels flat. And I don't know why, and I'm not sure. Maybe it's because we're not getting we're not getting the young bucks. We're getting right. this arrogant heel version of the Bucks. We're not getting the Bucks that we want to cheer for. Right. So we, you know, we it's just, it is, there's something about it that's just missing, but I am excited and intrigued about it. I, because I don't, uh, yeah, I just, like, don't, I don't, I it, don't know. <laughs> I, like, I'm trying to come up with like a smart, intellectual way to, to pin it. I just say, I just, I don't know. I what's per- personally, when they added this match to the show, I'm like, there's too many tag matches on this show. When you when you think about it, you have the the buy-in match, then you have the this huge brawl match, tag match, and you got the six-man tag, and then you got the ta- you got the tag title match. Yeah. Well, like, two of their EVPs are tag team or yeah. tag teams, so yeah. Well, well, to be fair though, they're they're only EVPs in name now, so yeah, that's true. Like they don't really have any creative, you know input now so i'm gonna go maybe, maybe this is just to set up a re a rematch maybe they're they want to do it again because i could see the bucks winning in a crap you know like a you know snake snarky way type deal i think the hardys are winning it i don't think the bucks really need it uh they really don't need to be winning a lot right now like they're the young bucks they don't really need like the rub anymore right um, yeah, and plus, I think they beat them at Ring of Honor. So, <laughs> so. plus losing, plus losing to one of the greatest tag teams of all time is no, yeah, it's no bad thing. Yeah. That, that's not a bad thing. Well, speaking of titles, we got the women's championship next. We got Thunder Rosa versus Serena Deeb 
The build has been completely shit, but the match is going to be fantastic. Yeah, I... Oh my god, this is going to be an amazing wrestling match. Thunder Rosa is one of my favorite wrestlers in the world. Oh, she's... She is... I, 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 who... I, Sean Ross Sapp has been... Is, has labeled her the female Bret Hart. And I have to agree. I can see that. And then Serena Deeb is just a fantastic professional wrestler. Like, she... I can't believe... And I say this every time I talk about her, and I will say it every time I talk about her until I'm done talking about right. her, is that I cannot believe the WWE had her yeah. and wanted her and just used her as a coach and didn't put her in a ring or do something like what they're doing. Right. They should have been doing what they're doing with her now with the whole professional of wrestling in NXT and help some of those NXT talents grow. And like, so, and to hell, Thunder Rosa, they wanted her to be a referee. Like, these two women are just at the top of their game. They're peak wrestlers. They're they're two of the best wrestlers regardless of gender. And mm -hmm. they're going to wrestle. And Thunder Rosa's promo tonight, she didn't come out in the face paint. She came out. She was That was actually busy. one of the, the, like, better promos in this build. Yes. And she killed it. And Serena Deeb and her are going to have. Wasn't a fan of AEW cutting her off mid-promo, though. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> might have been a mistake. Or she just wanted to keep talking. Maybe she was supposed to stop. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, anytime Thunder Rosa is in a match, I'm right. excited. But anytime you give me Thunder Rosa and Serena Deeb one on one, that is going to shoot up to the top of the card yeah, they, for me. And they had uh, two years ago. They had a really fun match when uh, Serena Deeb. Either uh, you no, when Thunder Rosa was the women's champion of NWA. And that was a, like yes. a, it was on dynamite, and it was a really fun match. And I'm like, mm -hmm. holy shit! And Serena Deeb this year has had one of my favorite women's programs with with the Karushita, who is mm -hmm. my favorite. Like she does like and you all. And I have never had this like never. This has been no secret. She does my favorite women's wrestler on the roster, and like to have that and Serena Deeb tear it down. Like their matches have been nothing but great. Yeah, and but th but Thunder Rosa is, is retaining, obviously. I I believe so. Um, I just you know Deeb is for all you know she. Could I see her as a women's champion? Absolutely. Yeah, but absolutely. I think right now, you didn't go through all of the bells and whistles that you went with to put the title on Rosa right. to have it end so quickly. I think there's some bigger matches for her to have. So yeah, like, but this either is, way, it's going to be an awesome match. Yeah, this is uh, how they call. It. Not what, is it, what do they call this? The whole, the whole. It's really wrong to say to say it like this, but she's technically like the, the the placeholder for the big right. match for All Out, yes. whatever that's going to be. I know. Speaking of Serena yeah. Deep, she actually had a one of my favorite matches last year, at the on the buy in of last year's Double or Nothing with Riho. Like imagine yeah, that she was on the buy in versus Riho. Last year, and this is one uh, what is one of the featured matches on the main show this year. Yeah, that's the power of these women. That's how good they are. And like I keep saying, it give these women a chance, put them in right. good spots, big spots, and you'll be surprised. And I think the the uh, it's tired and played out to say that the AEW women's division isn't on par with other divisions. Right. It's 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 there. It's getting, you just it's, have to. Be it's getting there. It's, yeah, they just need to give them chances, and you need to just watch, and it's going to be awesome. And I can't wait. And Kenny this Omega, my girl, yeah, Kenny Thunder Omega is Rose actually, is and Kenny Omega, from my understanding, is is, not, is helping producing these women's matches, and you can tell that the matches have been getting better <laughs> because, oh, yeah. like, I I haven't like the last few matches I've seen of the women outside of maybe one or two have been really good, and may I. Well, most certainly because of Kenny Omega's involvement with the stuff. Um, speaking of uh, Thunder Rosa, I don't know if they're going to have her on the, the next pay-per-view, but if, they, if Stardom did not have a show the same day as, as, as uh, Forbidden Door, I would have, uh, once this match is over, I would have Utami Hayashishida come out and challenge Thunderosa at Forbidden Door. 
They need to have some women's representation on Forbidden Door. I think it would be a huge mistake. So yeah, I would be down for that. Like, and I, 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 I speak highly of this woman every every chance I can't get. If you guys have not seen Utami Hayashida, she is a uh, female wrestler from Stardom. She is one of the best wrestlers on the planet. She is fantastic. She won. I, she won match of the year for me last year with her match with Sure uh, Shuri, which uh, which. Sure, he can make the show, maybe, possibly. I probably will know she's the women's champion. Um, I believe Mayu Iwatani holds a championship that's not probably won't be defended on that show. So I could see her popping up, doing something on the on the show. But I don't know. I don't. There, the chances of a women's match, unfortunately, is very slim on 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 the show on the next pay per view. But we'll see what happens with that. Oh yeah. They got here. a lot of building to do. They're, it's going to be exciting. It's an exciting time for AEW. Yeah. They got they got this. It's an exciting time for wrestling fans. Yeah, that too. Forbidden Door. Then they're going to uh. fall right into All Out. It's going to be yeah. a hell of a summer. WWE is going to have a bunch of stadium shows. It is a perfect time to be a wrestling fan. And, and There's um, something out there for everyone. And now we get to one of the best build build uh, matches on this show. MJF versus Wardlow. If MJ Ward if, if if Wardlow wins, he gets his release from his contract from MJF. If MJF wins, Wardlow basically is released <laughs> from AEW. <laughs> Quote, Which we all to, know is not gonna happen. But Wardlow's gonna, gonna kick his ass. <laughs> yes, if we're like, gonna go into storyline mode, yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, you know what? I think they should do and I and and I I don't think MJ this will hurt MJ at, at all. I think this should be a squash match. I was just going to say the same thing. Great minds think alike. I always say I think there should always be one one wrestler for every wrestler, maybe right. one or two that they just always have their number and I think Wardlow always having MJF's number right makes sense and I think that there is no other way to do it. Obviously, I don't think they will. I think they're gonna they're gonna drag it out. MJF's gonna get Spears involved, and yada I mean, yada yada. I mean, because they did a squash match with Punk and 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 uh, Wardlow, and didn't hurt Punk, and it didn't hurt Wardlow. Right. No. Exactly. And I think if you if you wanna if you wanna build on Wardlow's just insane, he's insanely over. Like this has right. been a hell of a build. I think. Yeah. I think he wins. I think he should the, win somewhat convincingly. Right. If you really want to drive the point home that he's the next guy, then this is how you the, do it. This has been compared to, and I actually see the comparison, which is actually great because it's one of my favorite storylines that they, they that WWE did. It's been compared to Batista turning on Triple H in Evolution. And, yeah. I, and that's a great comparison, too, because I love that storyline that, that played out long-term story of, of, of Batista winning the Royal Rumble and then Batista pretending like he's going to sign with SmackDown to face uh, John Cena. At, or I think it was John. No, it was not Cena. Who, who was the champion during that time? Shit. Oh, B JBL was the champion. Oh, yeah. For to be JBL ended up being Triple H in the most awesome fucking swerve ever. And this is Kind of like this a little bit, except there's no championships involved. But I'm excited for this. This, like, this is one of the best stories going into this, this show. Yeah, no, this is this is great. This is a huge build. I like it's going to be exciting. I'm interested to see once right. Wardlow is done with MJF what they do with him because I feel like a lot of this is because this story has been brewing for right. years. That we'll see what they do with Wardlow. MJF clearly they can put him in in any feud and he'll he'll succeed. I can't wait. I'm excited. I'm actually. Curious. I mean, you say you, you say you wonder what they're going to do with Wardlow after this. What will they do with MJF after this? Is the is another question. Well, that's what I said. I think you can I mean, do anything. I mean, he, I mean, he's probably in line for a title shot at some point. Yeah, I. I we'll get to that one, but but when we but I think. <laughs> I, I want to see MJF on double or not double or nothing. This is w, double or nothing. Uh, Forbidden door and the, the the guy. I think I want to I want to see this with I. I don't know why I want to see this, but I kind of want to see MJF versus Tanahashi. 
Yeah, like be fun. You have the ace of star. I almost said the ace of stardom. The ace of New Japan versus MJF, and that because that's just a weird mix of styles. Like that would be interesting. That I know yeah. a lot of people said uh, MJF and Naito, but I think MJ, I think Naito is going to be busy with a certain uh, tranquilo uh, member of the AW roster. That's if uh, Naito is is healed from his uh, eye surgery by then. He probably will be, ho- hopefully. So yeah, uh, there's a, a lot of ways you can go with MJF after that. I'm and I'm this. I think we're gonna see a lot of a lot of <laughs> Forbidden Door ramp it up here yeah. next week for sure. Once Double or Nothing's in our rear view, but right now, if I'm MJF and if you're listening, MJF, I would focus on the Mack truck. That's about to take you out before you worry about the forbidden door on the <laughs> in June. The forbidden door is Wardlow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think you need to get through that, buddy, before you worry about anything else. But all right. all right, it's now time for the main event of the show. CM Your Punk main event. Uh, hang Matt Adam Page for the AEW Championship. This is the first time the AEW title is main eventing double or nothing. <laughs> yeah. That Which is, is crazy. That's that, that insane. Te- well, technically, it didn't, there was no championships when the first Devil of Nothing happened. And which is kind of funny is uh, Punk was, was like in, uh, Tony Khan wanted Punk at, when he when he, this this whole thing started with the AEW, and now he's on the show that is basically kick started this entire thing. <laughs> yeah, like it's insane. Yeah. This has been another interesting and good build. Oh, yeah. That's um, all. Yeah, I'm, great stuff. I've been on the record of saying the Hangman title reign, and it's not his fault. I don't think he's doing anything I, wrong. I've enjoyed it. For what it's just. Right. He, he just had to deal with, like, Kenny Omega just had an all timer yeah. title run for any belt. And it's kind of tough. But, though, and then CM Punk is insanely over obviously he's cm punk who doesn't love cm punk oh um, well <laughs> i tell you that. <laughs> there Uh-oh. are people oh well those people i don't know what they're talking about i love cm punk he's my all-time favorite right. wrestler it's a little tidbit about me but either way tonight we saw and i and it dawned it dawned on me tonight watching AEW dynamite punk is Playing the the cool guy. This is just business. Why are you getting fired up? Why are you getting personal? Punk's not getting ramped up really that much. He's keeping it cool. He's acting like, hey man, I've been doing this for longer than you, you know, have even thought about it. Yada yada yada. Yep. And then it's just Hangman is just getting more fired up, more fired up to the point where he punched Punk today. I think what we're gonna see is we're gonna see Adam Page slip up. That's yeah. the whole story they're telling is like, he's going to get so worked up. He's going to get such into a frenzy. He's going to make one mistake and CM Punk's going to capitalize because a lot of CM Punk matches that we have seen in this AEW run is he has been out wrestled in storyline by a lot of these talents. And then he finds that one weakness and he exploits it and he gets the win. He always figures out a way to get the win. And I think he's just trying to get into Adam Page's head. And I think ultimately CM Punk leaves Double or Nothing as AEW World uh, Champion, and I, I feel like so far Punk has delivered in his run with AEW, and it's like, like first of all, this is some like the fact they're even talking about CM Punk wrestling for the AEW Championship in 2022 is mind-boggling on its own. <laughs> oh yeah, don't get me started. Oh my goodness, like, I, I never, I never thought it would ever happen. That he'd come back because I got my hopes up so many times. Like when it finally yeah. happened, I cried. Like it's in, like I'm like first of all, I'm so happy he's back because he made, like for a lot of people he people was gonna leave when he when he did the whole uh, pipe bomb in 2011. People were starting where it's gonna leave and then they stayed because of punk. Yeah, like yeah, he he got people back into wrestling too. He did that. He did for me. I, 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 I've always loved wrestling. Don't get me wrong. Right. But around that time, if I'm dating myself a little bit here and aging myself, you know, I was, you know, 
high school. I was just not not even in high school at that point. I should right. say I was out of high school. I was young, you know, going to the bars, chasing the girls, doing the doing the young, you know, twenties thing. And I wasn't. <laughs> I think it's a, I, I do think it's erotic. You're talking about bars and stuff and, and mentioning CM Punk. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> that, you know, that, is, like, that is funny. <laughs> I mean, his straightage thing aside, like I have plenty. No, of I just think it's funny. It's all. Yeah, you know, I'm out doing my thing. It's yeah. in a teen, my teenage years, right? And living my living my life, and then all of a sudden, you know, I have I have some I have a kid or two. You know, I've got four kids now, so like I'm at home and I'm not going out as much. And it's right. like, oh, wrestling. You know, I I love this. Let me get back into this. Let me. He was on the TV screen, and he was week in and week out the most compelling character on that show at the time for me because he was different it was something new he was saying those pipe bomb things and he's talking trash to triple h who we know is married to the boss's daughter and he's saying a lot of things that are real so for me cm punk got me back into the love of wrestling to the point where i'm here now and we're doing predictions with you misfit gamer and i love him for that and i love you for having me on and i'm right. excited for I, I don't know if you can right. tell i'm pumped for double or nothing right. and and pages run like i've enjoyed pages run and his matches that he's had as champion like you like the the two classics with with danielson the 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 Shouldn't have been as good as it was match with Lance Archer, which surprised a lot of people. Yeah. Um. They they had the the two matches with Adam Cole, um, mm-hmm. the battle of the Adams. Uh. No, everybody won because you know I was like Adams going to win. That's <laughs> but that's right. Nobody um, lost. Huh? Yeah. And then he's going with CM Punk. Like, imagine this coming going from Kenny Omega, Brian Danielson, Adam Cole, and then CM Punk. He's on a murderer's row of, of title defenses. And like, I, I love the edge that they're giving hangman. And I think that they gave him the edge because punk is still so over. Right. Cause early on, you remember like with Archer, he's like, I don't even know what a death a Texas death match is. Yeah. And it's like, how are you a wrestling champion? <laughs> and never heard of a Texas death match, bro. Uh, uh, and I'm not slighting the man, but I love this edginess to page. <laughs> I love what's going to happen, and it's it, it's going to be a. They're telling a great story. And and CM Punk and so somebody, I was I was talking to one of my friends like uh, like earlier last year where where Hangman was like the most over guy in the in the company, and and somebody said how are you gonna who who how are you gonna get people to boo Hangman? That's this is impossible. <laughs> That's what I told somebody, and then somehow only one person was able to do it, and that person is CM Punk. And who I think is going to win on Sunday, CM Punk. I, you know how I I would like to see the finish be, I must say Punk, uh, Paige go for the box shot, and he gets caught into the GTS. Yeah, that would be dope. I mean, the only way you can swing back the fences and towards the hangman being a baby face is if you decide to turn Punk heel. He does some shady shit. I mean, win the belt. They, you know, I don't know if they'll do it. I think this edge. I mean, he may tease it during good. the match, um, but I think Hangman, like uh, Hangman, I think Punk is going to win the championship and it's going to build towards All Out, where where I think he, uh, depending on where they're going to be at, might be the biggest heel in the company by All Out. <laughs> um, because I do think they're going to go into because if they're going to go into the United Center, uh, one of the biggest. Arenas in the in the in the in the world, and you're gonna have a pay per view with New Japan Pro Wrestling. I think you're gonna want CM Punk as the champion and in the main event of that show, and probably against a against Kazuchika Okada. <laughs> Cause, yeah, because what I think is gonna happen at the end of the show is Punk celebrating, and the next thing you hear is coin drop. And out comes Kazuchika Okada, and the place goes nuts. At double or nothing, yeah, no, that would be that would be a great because they the AW loves to do this type of finishes where they leave you going, okay, out to see Wednesday. But that I, would be a great way to end that thing. Oh, I'm I'm so excited, like Punk and ooh, like there's like matches 
Uh, and we and I said I said earlier that the that the six man tag may still steal the show. Heck, the the three way for the tag titles may steal the show. The the yeah. Cole and and Joe may steal the show. I mean, uh, MJF and Wardlow probably won't steal the show. <laughs> yeah. um, well, that's what they do in AEW. Any yeah. of these any of these matches can come out of nowhere and be the match of the night. And ultimately, it's hard to find like their pay per views. Right. There's rarely, there's rarely like a miss in terms of a match. And like I'm lo- it's very and few and far. Between. I'm looking through my like my top like matches of the year. I think it's like I think it's like I have a twenty top twenty five, and like number three is Punk and, and MJF. Maybe Punk and Hangman might actually because Hangman is like like right now Hangman versus Danielson from uh from the debut episode of of. TNT or TBS is like my favorite match of the year so far. Yeah, that was a great match. They, <laughs> hell, Danielson came into AW and just had great match after great match. It'd be hard to put the, the fact that the fact that, that the fact that Danielson came in and went straight after Kenny Omega is what it was, it was, and Kenny Omega oh, yeah. did that entire match with a with Vertigo and a messed up body. Oh yeah. That dude um, freaking nature. But yeah, I'm excited for Double or Nothing. Double or Nothing is this Sunday on pay-per-view. You can get it on Fight TV. I'm not even promoting this. Well, I am promoting it because it's the show we're talking about. You got <laughs> Fight TV internationally. I wish this the Fight TV would be in America too because I fucking hate Bleacher Report, which is why I'm getting it through my cable provider. Uh all that stuff. Um I'm excited. Got a plug out. Tell the people where you can where you, they can find you. Oh well, you can find me at Plugo underscore on Twitter, Plugo on Facebook and Instagram. You can find me every Thursday night on At Love Wrestling. I do a little show called Between Two Beards with my co-host JPJ. We'll be on. We're on every Thursday at eight p.m. So please check that out. You can find our social media at between at B Two Beards on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. We're taking over the world. We're trying. I appreciate you having me on to talk double or nothing. I get super excited, especially around AEW pay per view time because they do such I'm, a good I'm job. hoping to have you guys, you and uh, JP, around for the Forbidden Door. Because I, if, yeah, if, well, get a hold of us. We're gonna. I know JPJ wanted to be on this yeah. one. It just didn't work out with schedules. He and I honestly, like I said earlier tonight right. when we were doing our side, I appreciate you uh, staying up a little late. To yeah, let no me problem. Squeeze, squeeze this in. I got myself a hectic weekend, but I love sitting down and talking wrestling whenever I can. So, dude, much appreciated. I'm looking forward to the show. Uh, and you can find me. Well, I go by Matt Misfit on Twitter. The problem with my you my uh, uh, Twitter handle is somebody has Misfit. So, and I'm not a Miz fan, but I have Misfit spelled with, like Miz because yeah. it was the only one that was available. So. <laughs> So I'm trying to get that rectified, hopefully, because no one's used. There's somebody that has, somebody has Plugo on Twitter too, and they haven't used it in like a decade. I, I I'm trying to figure out how to get like change that because you know. Uh, but this is the Misfit Wrestling Podcast. Um, I haven't done one of these in a while because I've been busy lately. The last one I did was for I, I haven't really done one for the YouTube channel lately, but I did was on Spotify for a while. Spotify not, wasn't really doing it for me. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but um, yeah, you can find me on the, like the Twitters, on the on the social medias, and whatever. Um, I may be doing a live watch along. I'm not so sure. Not sure about that yet. Um, but I'm excited for Double, and I think this is going to be a fantastic show. AW usually has like it's kind of their last pay per view was pretty good. Um. Though there's like their stand bear, like their I don't know. It's, it's, it's it, double or nothing always has like something <laughs> happening. Oh yeah. Like it's oh yeah. It's like their wrestle. Well, it depends on what what you define as their WrestleMania. Sometimes some people say it's all out. Some will say double or nothing. You know, who knows? But uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Peace.